So, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 is a verse that is often preached and is often used to encourage people. Um, and it says, I'm going to read it straight out of the word of God. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. And what's interesting is many of us, we, we quote that scripture, we know it by heart, but many of us don't know the context in which it was said. And uh, it was said in the context of time in biblical history when Nebuchadnezzar had essentially carried away uh, children of Israel from Jerusalem into Babylon. And, you know, you have this, this group of people, they're considered exiles and they're, they're fearful and they're afraid because everything that they had planned for their life suddenly felt like it was not going to happen. It was an impossibility. It was out of reach. Now they were in a foreign land and God encourages them in the midst of this foreign land. And I want to share with you the very beginning of this in verse four. It says, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses, settle down, plant gardens, eat what they produce, get married, just have a good old time. Now you would think, okay, we're in exile. This is not the time to, to get married. This is not the time to plant gardens. This is not the time to celebrate. This is the time for us to figure out how to get back to Jerusalem. But that's when God says, see, I know the plans that I have for you. You don't know the plans that I have for you. Just trust me. And I've had several Babylon experiences in my life. One in particular was uh, after my husband and I got married. I had planned to go to medical school, become a doctor. I was going to move to New York or Atlanta or some big city and practice medicine. And my husband told me that uh, that wasn't in the plans because he planned to serve his father who had pastored a church in a small town called Gainesville, Florida. And I said to him at the time, I said, there's nothing for me to do in Gainesville. Like literally, there's nothing for me to do. And he said, listen, I just believe that this is where God has called us. Wow. And I prayed about it. And I said, well, God, if this is your doing, I'm going to need you to literally make a way out of no way. <laughs> and because I surrendered to what God spoke through my husband, I did not understand it. Um, it definitely redirected my plans. Because I surrendered to that, God literally created positions out of thin air for me. Wow. Every job I've ever held was brand new. Every single one. So much so that the job that I'm in right now, while living in Gainesville, Florida, is based in Menlo Park, California. Wow. But I still live in Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> I mean, our God is the type of God that if we will surrender our plans to him because he knows them yeah. and he has called us to do good things, he's not going to harm us. He always proves himself to be faithful. So if you find yourself in a Babylon experience, I'm telling you, you can trust your father because he never calls us into Babylon to die. He always calls right. us into places to prosper and to live. And so that's that's my encouragement. I'd love to hear from my sisters here, any experiences you've had in places of Babylon where you weren't planning on going there, but somehow you lifted up your eyes and there you were. <laughs> Look, what I'm doing right here with you guys, this was like a Babylonian kind of experience, if you will. <laughs> I wanted to just do hair and just be a good wife and a good mom. And my husband told me he was going into ministry, but I didn't know that was I was going into ministry as well. Look, I made a vow with God years ago that I would never speak in public, that I would never stand up in front of people and ever do anything like this. Yep. It's like he played a trick on me. And now I'm up here speaking to <laughs> millions of people around the world on TBN and sharing the gospel in multiple pulpits. So it's like... It was something that I never had on my radar, nothing that I would have ever imagined or dreamt that I would do. But all God requires us to do is what I've learned is just to share our story, our story being inclusive of being in who he happens to be. And so when I got, you know, comfortable in that, it's like that's where fulfillment begins to 
when, when really fulfillment began to take place in my life. But I thought he was playing a trick on me or a joke. I'm saying, God, you know the deal. You know, I made a vow. I promised that I would never do that. But he's looking at me like, who did you make that vow Come to? And <laughs> Come on. Who did you make that promise with? Because it wasn't with me. And so, you know, we sing these songs. I surrender all, all mm. to thee, God. I surrender. It's like, but do we truly, truly mean that? Mm. Sometimes it's hard giving up you know, authority over your own life when you're used to making decisions for yourself. But the best decision that I've ever made is to surrender to God and to allow him to lead and direct me wherever he wants me to be. And so that's my story and I'm sticking with it. (laughs) (laughs) I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.